Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. The investigation never landed charges against T. Denny Sanford in South Dakota, but newly unsealed documents reveal evidence of a possible crime in another state. According to the court documents, investigators used GPS location information to confirm that a picture of a naked child was taken inside the philanthropist's California home in 2019. The affidavit says there are lines visible in the picture, so it may have been a picture taken of another screen. Kelloland.com's Jacob Newton has been digging into the newly filed documents and metadata. You can find his full report along with a statement from Sanford's attorney and the redacted documents in his Kelloland.com original report. Francis Lang pleaded guilty but mentally ill Wednesday afternoon to three counts of murder and two counts of aggravated assault in the Scotland triple homicide case. 43-year-old Lang admitted that he went into a Scotland home on November 9, 2021 and shot everyone inside. Attorney General Marty Jackley says the guilty but mentally ill plea is the same as a guilty plea and that Lang will just have further evaluation and treatment for mental illness from the Department of Corrections. He still faces three mandatory life sentences and an additional 30 years for the aggravated assaults. A sentencing hearing is set for July 24th. A 27-year-old woman was arrested in Brookings in connection with a hit-and-run crash that injured a 5-year-old girl. Police say the girl was riding her bicycle with family along Madari Avenue. They stopped at an intersection before crossing. Officers say the driver of a Jeep didn't see the family and clipped the bicycle. The girl was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Police say the driver left the scene without stopping to check on the family. A witness helped investigators track down the suspect, Lindsay Johnson. She was arrested for failure to report an accident. Well, now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Another hot day and summer-like temperatures, Scott. Oh, that will continue. Numbers in the upper 80s, low 90s. That'll cover much of central and eastern Kettleland. A little cooler in the western South Dakota. Clouds will be a little thicker. Better chances for afternoon showers and thunderstorms in and around Rapid City. We'll have to late until, wait until the late afternoon or evening hours in central and eastern Kettleland. 80s and 90s will continue for the next several days for central and eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa. And these rain chances will hold on to them at least through the first half of the weekend. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. Lake Lakota in Lincoln County has been a popular spot for swimming and paddling, but the lake is extremely dry this summer and there is no water. The lake was built more than 40 years ago as part of a flood protection program in the Petty Creek watershed. Officials hope the 90-acre lake would be used for recreation. The lake is part of the Newton Hills State Park. Dry years are part of the lake's life cycle. Find out about the lake's history and current condition in a Kelloland.com original by Ray Yost on our website. What kind of trees should you plant in Sioux Falls? It's a common question at garden centers and with the city forestry department. A specialist says the city planted 650 new trees in spring, uh, this spring in city parks. The city attempts to try different kinds of trees to see what works in the climate. We have over 80 acres of park system, which is fantastic for doing test plots. We look at plant hardiness zones, we look at tree soil conditions, and we like to experiment with new trees. This helps us to increase our diversity citywide. Um, it also allows us to test trees to make sure that they grow in South Dakota and they can withstand our harsh climate. In a Kelloland.com original, digital reporter Eric Mayer has a breakdown of the diversity of trees planted by the city and what people should know about tree diversity in Sioux Falls. Community members, health care officials and others gathered in Yankton yesterday to break ground on a new behavioral health care facility. The $26 million facility will provide crisis care for behavioral health, mental health and substance abuse for Yankton and surrounding communities. Project began three years ago by Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health Services. It's part of a larger effort to regionalize crisis care in South Dakota um, so that people can get um, care closer to home um, than what has traditionally been available. Um, so that's, that's the big um, uh, step forward that the state's taking with this kind of facility. The building is expected to open in 2025.
Just in time for our 70th anniversary, Kelluland got a surprise gift, a reel of film from the 1950s. It came from the family of the host of Kelluland's first live variety show. It was called the Sylvia Dunn Show. Sylvia was a farmer's wife from Beaver Creek, Minnesota, who could sing and do live commercials. For years, her family had the only copy of the live show. Last week, they decided to give the original 16 millimeter film to Kelloland Media Group. We're having fun with uh, fireworks. We're having fun with food. We have a human firecracker in the studio. And uh, right now, to sort of start us rocketing off, we're going to have Standing on the Corner with Abby. The variety show from 1955 and 1956 filled the hour before the Captain Eleven show. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, our weather today, well, warming up uh, again, summer like weather continues uh, in the forecast or close to 90 later today. Now we'll see how many scattered thunderstorm chances we can bubble up west of winter. There's a, a patch or two there. Also the northeast, you could argue for a couple thunderstorms and then south of Sioux City. There's another belt that comes up again. If you're looking for rain, it it's still limited. We're not getting widespread rain in this pattern, but at the same time, you can't discount the fact that there are going to be some cells on radar. So that's the story. You know the drill. And tonight, overnight, we'll likely cycle down after midnight. We'll regroup. We'll see if we can fire up a few more of these around the region tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. But in between any storms on radar, it's going to remain way above average hot weather. High pressure, big block, the jet stream is essentially all shoved way up north into northern Canada. So we don't have a traditional west to east steering flow of weather. That's why you can't bank on this rain organizing and moving in these big lines like we yeah. might normally see this time of year. So instead, we get these uh, splotchy patterns. Uh, you can generate some rain underneath the high-pressure block this weekend. There's a little bit of that in our seven-day. Uh, next week, keep an eye on that high. See if this thing dives south, and if it does that, well, then it's really going to shut the rain off. You know, we might have a, a few days in here where we have to just yank it all together. But then also, we're hopeful that maybe we break this thing down uh, toward the end of the 10 day forecast, but we got a long way to go. I mean, it's just June 1st now, and that's looking out to June 9th or June 10th. And there's no guarantee that that's exactly the way that's going to look. But nevertheless, we'll keep an eye on all of it here in the storm center. Take the rain when you can get it. 90 in Mitchell. We feel very confident that these daytime temperatures are going to continue to be way above normal. And all that does is it just accelerates the evaporation. So when you do pick up some rain, you, you go through it pretty quickly and overnight lows in the 60s. So we're going to maintain warm weather uh, using your air conditioning quite a bit. 90 or close to that level in Aberdeen for several more days. We'll carry the rain chance off and on through the weekend and then we'll we'll see if that high pressure ridge comes in here Monday, Tuesday. And if that happens, well, then we'll have pretty low chances of rain during that segment of time. The one difference continues to be the Black Hills. We've generated Scattered thunderstorms there consistently, and there's more to come. Rapid City is actually quite a bit above normal right now for rain the last 30 days. Check out more details about that story, too, online at Kemmelland.com.